God bless you. So beautiful to meet in class uh, with so many uh, determined uh, students, uh, with so many uh, exciting uh, students, with so many that in my spirit I feel that you're going to go conquering. <laughs> yeah, going to go conquering over all the powers of the enemy, over all the onslaughts of the devil, and that you're going to be a victor, that you're going to be a champion for God. We love you and we appreciate you. And you that uh, see us through the television means uh, into your classroom and into your home and in and your television station or, or, or any other facility that you're receiving, we say God bless you particularly and we're delighted to have you. We are involved in a great and important group of studies. Uh, these studies are world changing. Uh, these studies, uh, their time has come. When I first began to teach on the subject of demon power, I was ahead of my time. I had criticism from church leadership. I had those who said that I was exalting the devil through my studies, and I said, you ought to ask the devil about that. Uh, he'd say, oh no, because everywhere some law goes, I'm in trouble. He rebukes me, he casts me out, he hurts me, he exposes me. Uh, we have never helped his kingdom, never, once. And, but the devil would have people to say things like that to try to keep us off his trail. But you know, we are sure of where we stand and therefore we are on his trail. Now we are teaching you out of a, of a big, uh, beautiful uh, syllabi. Uh, it's, it's called uh, Demons and Deliverance, Principalities and Powers, uh, Volume 1. It's very important uh, that this information uh, get to you and, and get to uh, our total church. And we're glad for the exposure that we have in a class like this uh, that will finally reach several millions of people. Uh, it will reach, it will reach the, the Philippines through Channel 7. It will reach Japan uh, by Channel 2. And it will reach uh, many of our Bible schools throughout the country. And so we are thankful that we, we have uh, millions uh, that will hear exactly what we're teaching and will go out to defeat the devil in these last days. The devil is defeated, he is destroyed, and you and I are going to have to initiate it. And in, in, in today's lesson, we are at part two on areas of demon domination. We are at part two of it. And if you have your, your syllabi there, we are working off page uh, 31. And this is lesson 10 in this series of lessons, and we want you to greatly in, be involved. Now, when Satan was thrown out of heaven, when the devil was thrown out of heaven, he sought to hurt everything God was doing. And as men began to multiply on, this, on the face of the earth, he always sought the larger places to dominate. Uh, when Babylon became the first empire, he moved into Babylon uh, with all kinds of witchcraft, all kinds of witchcraft. And Babylonian witchcraft is known in the world this very moment. Uh, um, much of Babylon's witchcraft of, of uh, millennia ago is practiced in the world of today. And, and so he wants to control nations. He seeks to control nations. He'd like to control our country. He wants, in God we trust, off, off our money. Yeah, uh, he wants to destroy us as a land. But uh, if too many people are praying and too many people are rejoicing and, and too many people are praising God, he don't have much chance, you see. Uh, and, and especially if too many people are knowledgeable. <laughs> you see, the Bible says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If we know God and if we know him, then he can't do anything. He is rendered helpless before knowledge. When you know that you have the authority, the power to destroy him, he can't do anything about it. Hold on there and let's get the job done. Now to our class here. Uh, we uh, went partway through this lesson, beginning on page 27 and, and completing through page uh, 30, and we discovered uh, two, two tremendous facts. Uh, one was that the devil sought to control empires, and, and we showed you how almost all the great empires have be, be, been infested with witchcraft that you, you read in history, they always had their sorcerers and, and their witch doctors and, and their, their crystal ball readers. And, and even Washington, D.C. Uh, has, has more uh, of the occult per square inch than any city in the United States of America. Uh, the, the people that can prognosticate the stars and, and the, and, and the uh, 
and the crystal balls. They, they're hovering on every corner looking for, let me tell you when to travel, when not to travel, and where you're going to go. Now, now, they're a bunch of liars, and you, and you better believe it. You better believe it. Any nation that gives itself over to witchcraft is doomed and damned. And so first, uh, the devil strikes out for nations. He wants to conquer nations. After that, he strikes out for cities. If the devil can't take America, he says, well, I'll take New York and, and Boston and Chicago and Los Angeles. If I can't take the wilderness, I'll take the cities. And so he fights uh, for cities. An example is a city like, like Hollywood. And, and when I say Hollywood, maybe it's not geographically Hollywood. Uh, we've been in that area a lot of times, and we love that area. Uh, but we're talking about the industry that has made Hollywood uh, uh, a, famous, a famous place. Uh, that there is a spirit that overlays that whole uh, uh, film industry, uh, that, uh, that industry that has to do with entertainment, the entertainment, the amusement the amusement industry. The word amusement is from Greek, and it's made up of two words. The A in front of the amusement means no or not. Muse means to think. So uh, uh, the word amusement means not to think. And if the devil can ever get you not to think, he can destroy you. You got me? If he can ever get you not to think, he has you. But if you do think, and if you think spiritually, you can destroy all the powers of the devil. And I want to tell you another thing. You can feed the devil's group, uh, like, for example, India. You could give India all the food on the face of the earth, and next year they'd be starving to death again. You say, why? God's blessings are not with those people that worship idols. They've got 300 million gods, and the Bible says the gods of the heathen are devils. Until you begin spiritually to bless a land, you're putting your money down a hole. These third world countries around, around, around the earth, they owe the American government billions and billions and billions. You won't ever get it back. Of course you won't. If you'd had any intelligence, you'd have known it before you loaned it. Their problem is not financial. Their problem is spiritual. You've got to believe me. Study it. Their problem is spiritual. You correct the, the internal life of those people to know the true and the living God and to learn the Ten Commandments, you'll have a new society on your hands. You'll have a prosperous society on your hands. Now, let's, let's take the city. Uh, we, we, we call it Hollywood, uh, for example. And as I said, uh, not exactly just the, the geographical limits of Hollywood, but the, the, the great entertainment industry in that part of the world. We know that it has promoted from the very beginning immorality from its very conception. It has, it has uh, promoted uh, a, a sensual atmosphere, a sensual atmosphere, the allurements of the flesh. See how much bone you can see. One, 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 uh, one actor said recently, says the next time they have me in the bed uh, w with a girl, uh, uh, they're going to see the real thing. I'm going to get on top of her and have intercourse, and they're, gonna, they're not just going to see two people lying under a sheet. I'm going to be doing it, or I won't be there. They're so full of evil. She doesn't belong to him. She is an actress with a husband and children and only acting. And he says it can't be acting. You see, he is so full of evil. And you call it a sensuality. And a lustful spirit. A lustful spirit. One marriage, two marriages, three marriages, four marriages, five marriages. Because lust is like an animal running away with it, you see. A lustful spirit. In the past... Uh, from our own immediate area here, which is a very conservative area. Young couples ha have said, I want to move from here and into the Southern California area. And I, I speak to them very carefully because I've been going to Southern California since 1934, before most of the people that lived there or got there, I've already been there. And, and so it isn't that I'm a stranger there. I've been going there constantly since 1934. So we do love the place. We do have an interest in it. We, we have our greatest meetings in that area. So we're not downgrading anything. But I tell our couples, I don't think you're ready for that area. I want to tell you something. Almost every one that left this area to go to that area were soon in a divorce, usually 12 months into a divorce, into a divorce. They, they, they came up against spirits that they weren't ready to combat with. They came up against a power, and they that loved each other began to find, uh, find uh, dissatisfaction with each other and, and uh, quarreling uh, between each other, and finally, hate, hate. 
the one they had promised to love all their lives, and they were broken asunder. Now, now, now I could, uh, you know, 10 or 15 or 20 times, not just one or two times, uh, this has happened. And, and I, I say to them, uh, money, money is one thing, but living together and going to heaven is something greater and more beautiful. I have personally known of those who moved away into an atmosphere like that, and they, they were soon destroyed in their own family life because uh, Satan uh, destroyed their morals, and, and they were not able to, to stay together. Now, let's go to a, a further thing, further from us than, than that, and a lot more serious. Uh, and I, I say this very graciously because I've been going to India for a long time, too, and not that we wish to downgrade a beautiful city like Calcutta. It does have beautiful parts in it. One Indian official told my television crew recently, says, if you've ever seen a, a, a nice picture on India showing our beautiful homes and our lovely families, and they said no. Says, no, you come here and take the beggars on the street, and you come here and take the most dreadful pictures that you can, and that's what you show about us, says, we don't want you here anymore. There are parts of that area that are surely lovely, and some Indian people, the most beautiful people that you can meet on the face of the earth. But the city of Calcutta, I, I, I was flying out of there uh, on a plane uh, a few years ago, and sitting beside me was a man, and there were tears in his face. And, and I, he was young, younger than I, so I said, sorry, you're having a problem. He said, I don't have any problem. I said, well, I, I saw you weep a little bit. He said, I don't know, don't know about that. He says, I, I was in here for four or five days and said, man, I, I was just a sad. I was a sad every hour I was here. And, and that little tear you see is gladness. I'm just so glad to get out of here. And that man was a newspaper man. But he couldn't take Calcutta. He couldn't take, Calcutta was more than he could, than, than, than he could take. And, and so Calcutta is a depressing, is a depressing city. If you're sensitive to your insides, Calcutta is a depressing city. You say, well now, why would Calcutta be a depressing city? Well, it's named after a female demon or goddess named Kali. I've been to her temple uh, a, a several times. And Kali is a fierce demon spirit. I wish I had a picture here just to hold up to you. <laughs> it, it would get you. Uh, her tongue hangs away out down here, that wide. That, down here. And, and they kill goats every morning, and the blood flows underneath her. And, and the people on the other side splash it in their mouth and on their face, uh, believing they're going to get their prayers answered. So when you see her image at her great temple, with her tongue sticking out six inches or eight inches long, that the temple is where they cut the throats of these, uh, of these uh, animals and, and goats and let in the blood flow in a groove underneath this, this hideous I idol. Her devotees splash blood, uh, hot blood into their mouth and, and face. And, and so the, the Kali Temple in Calcutta is also a place of gross immorality, if you want to know what morals are, of, of immorality. It claims that this goddess can give children to barren women, and, and the priests help this thing along. And I, and I saw a tree full of horrible-looking uh, uh, heathen artifacts tied, tied to the branches that had to, do, uh, had to do with fetishes and had to do with getting kids, and, 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 and oh, it, it would... It, it, now, I don't want to be offensive. I, I'm only telling you that the, the precious people of India are under a force and a power that they don't have to be under, and that's the power of Kali, which is the power of the devil. Now, now that shouldn't be offensive to you, and I don't want it to be. The devotees came and tied, tied these little things uh, to this tree and prayed to the goddess Kali in Calcutta. Often people deeply under her influence are subject to violent fits, fits, they can't control their emotions. To win Calcutta to Christ, one certainly would have to face that demon in number one combat before you could ever do it. One of our missionaries told me recently that he prayed for a woman a hundred miles away from the city of Calcutta, and that he went to pray for the woman that a spirit manifested itself. And the missionary said to this spirit that manifested in this woman, well, who are you? And this spirit spoke back to him, and the person says, I am from Kali. In, in Calcutta, and, uh, and this spirit spoke back to the, uh, this missionary spoke back to the spirit and said, Spirit of Kali, I command you to come out of this woman in Jesus' name. And this spirit came out weeping and crying, saying, Now I must journey back to Calcutta to find somebody else in, 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 which, I, in which I can live. Here's a woman that had been to worship at that temple, and when she left there, one of this evil demons that surround that place entered her, was manifesting itself to her in all kinds of crazy ways, including almost insanity. And when it was cast out, 
The woman was perfectly normal, perfectly healed by God's power. And, and so uh, uh, it then says, I have to go back to Calcutta and find someone else that I can live in. I've spoken to several people who have been, uh, uh, you might say, spiritually discerned. Invariably, they say the city of, of Calcutta is, is, is something else. But I wish to assure you that it is a, a, a city uh, with a spirit of oppression that hurts human persons. Such cities, without doubt, have dic dignitaries uh, dominating them in the word of the Spirit, in the word of the Spirit. Now, let's, let's, uh, let's bring ourselves up to date here. We're telling you about areas in which the devil dominates. And we showed you first empires. I presume we should have gone back into research and, and given it to you in a greater measure of empires of the past and how they were destroyed through fantasy. You know, it, 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 through, uh, through spirit world involvement, that not natural in any way, but the devil caused them to die. You see, uh, empires. And then when the devil can't destroy an empire or a nation, he wants to destroy America. He, he, he's got a stranglehold on England today. There's a stranglehold on England, England to destroy her through, through spiritism and, and through pagan religions that are seeking to take over uh, the, 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 the nation of Britain today. France is under the same thing uh, in, in France. The church is at a low ebb, and spiritism is riding high, riding high in, in that land. The devil is a, is a mean devil, and he wants to destroy nations. And when he can't get the nations, uh, he wants to destroy cities. The most interesting thing I've seen along this line was in Indonesia. In Indonesia, uh, they had, when I was there, uh, areas called cities of devils. Now, now, these are cities where the chief priests of demon worship reside. They have their black magic and their spiritism, and their headquarters is there, and they work out of those cities uh, through the rest of the islands. The doctors of witchcraft, they congregate together in, in those cities. I asked a witch doctor the other day in South Africa. I said, we understand that you are the number one witch doctor. He says, now, how did you get that? How, how, did, how did you get that accolade? How, who, who called you the number one? He grinned at me with a funny little grin and says, when all the other witch doctors come to you for consultation, that makes you the number one. He says, I never go to anyone uh, to, help for, to help me with the world of spirit. I can handle all the world of spirit myself. But all the witch doctors in this whole area come and bow before me here to ask instructions and help because they come up against spiritual situations they cannot handle. So I am the master of the witch doctors. And, and uh, he said that he, he was the total one. And the government said he was the top one also, that he was the head witch doctor in the area. And, and that's in the area of Soweto where they have 1,100,000 black people, the largest uh, black city on the face of this earth, totally black city. The doctors of witchcraft congregate in areas, in, in cities, and they work out from them. You know, Soweto is a, is a headquarters for witchcraft, and they come out of eight, eight different black nations to live there, and they all bring their witchcraft with them, you see. And, and uh, it's amazing. The witch doctor that I just spoke to you about, he was trained in an Anglican school they gave him free of charge all of his education. And, and he said, but my grandfather prevailed. He was a witch doctor, and I have the spirits of my grandfather. That group did not prevail over me. And it, it, it got to you, you know, that, that here he had free education from a Christian religious group, and they couldn't prevail his grandfather. And, they, and the spirits of these devils, they are the ones that prevail. So down in Indonesia, uh, the doctors congregate in these cities and they work out from them. And in these cities, there's spiritual darkness so much greater than in the other cities in Indonesia. Are you there? <laughs> Are you there? That's true. In those areas, you, you can't get a big church started so easy. You can't have thousands of people saved so easy. Unless a deliverer comes, like we call these healing evangelists, they, they come and the first night they get up, they bring into divine subjection the powers of the devil and, and they come against his kingdom and they destroy his, his principality and they take authority over the ruling prince, cast him down and give an altar call. And the people come flooding forward by the hundreds and by the thousands because the chief prince of that area has been subdued. And, and that's the only way to take great cities for God, whether it's Chicago or, or whether it is, is New York City or whether it's Hollywood. That is the only way that we'll ever be able to take great cities for God. It seems to me that in the great cities here in America, increasingly, they're becoming more difficult to reach for God. Chicago is a very hard city. 
New York is a very hard city. Philadelphia, Washington, D.C. Uh, they're becoming more difficult because Satan's grip is getting stronger and stronger upon these cities to hold them in a stranglehold bondage to where they cannot get, where they cannot get free. And our government, you know, it upholds it. <laughs> it, it, it gives tax deductions to all these cults and groups and, and treats them as if they're part of the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Government is ignorant. You better believe it. If you're involved in government, get smart and find out there's more than what you can see in this world. There's also that which is the unseen, the powers of Satan and the powers of the devil. And we must combat those powers and set multitudes free by God's mighty powers. Now, I believe the devil's power it's taken a stronger a hold upon many American cities. I've observed in many areas that some churches are smaller than they were even several years ago. Some of them even what we call full gospel churches are much smaller. One time they had 1,000 or 1,500. Now they've got 100 or 200. Uh, they, they weren't able to stand the pressure of the devil in their city. <laughs> uh, they could. Jesus has all power. He'll give you all power. But if you're in ignorance, he can't do anything for you. God can't bless ignorance. You with me? All right. If there was ever a time when the gospel of power, <laughs> the gospel of power, the gospel of authority, the gospel of strength, it should invade our big cities in the United States of America, bind the powers of the devil, and let Americans go free. You know, neighbors, there are millions of Americans that would like to go free from the devil's power. Big cities dominate our country. Now think, think, think on this. Much of the filth on television and from the cinema comes out of two great centers. One is Hollywood and the other is New York. Uh, most of the amusement that is wicked and immoral come from those centers. They, they dominate whole areas. I am sure that we need to attack these great cities spiritually spiritually, with prayer, with fasting, with seeking God, in order that we might defeat the devil. Might defeat the devil. I want you to know that I humbly feel that if I had not prayed over the girl in Bilibid Prison in Manila, Philippines, and wrestled for two days and two nights against the evil spirit that possessed her, that the great revival that came to the city of Manila and came to the nation of the Philippines would never have been. But we released, we released power that set a whole region free by the mighty power of God. How glad I am that the Lord used, used us, used me, in order to set the girl free and millions of others that have been set free now in the great nation of the Philippines. It is very interesting to me that Jesus wept over the, the biggest city, <laughs> the biggest city that he ever saw, and that was Jerusalem. Jerusalem was the largest city that Jesus ever saw. And that's a city that he wept over. He didn't weep, weep over towns and villages. It says that he wept over, over Jerusalem. I want to say something to the church of Jesus Christ. If we had millions of people weeping over our big cities today, we could have revival. We could break down the power of the devil that's involved in the political operation in these cities, that's in the economic operation of these cities, wickedness in high places that you couldn't dream about. God can break those things to pieces just like he did in the days of Moody. And when he broke them down and Moody hit these high places, praying and fasting and hiring people to pray and fast until he had an army fighting against the prevalent powers of Satan. And that's the reason the great revival, and we need it again. We need it today. We should weep over our great cities of our land lest they become the throne rooms of demon power. Throne rooms of demon power. The reason the evil one's power is stronger in big cities like Washington and New York City and Chicago and Los Angeles, is because they're full of soothsayers, they're full of crystal gazers, they're full of fortune tellers, they, they're full of spiritist mediums, they're full of cults from every land all over the world, and they have their little signs up on the buildings, and multitudes of the people are worshiping them. In San Francisco, I went to a, a, a Buddhist temple, and the inside of the lobby had a wall of pure gold. And I looked down into the worship area, and there was about 100 people down there, and every one of them was an American learning Buddhism in downtown San Francisco. Now, now Buddhism is of the devil. They, they worship idols. They worship, they worship demons, and they need to be set free. All Buddhists need to be set free from the mighty power of Satan and delivered into the mighty power of the loving, great, glorious God that created the universe. There's no power that could stand against this living church if we would stand up and do God's will. 
the Lord Jesus promised that even the gates of hell could not stop his glorious church. Not even the gates of hell. That means the strongest thing the devil has just can't stop us. And I think the greatest thing that we could do at this moment is to come against the devil in our big cities.